Iwan. Hi. Thank you, John, uh, for allowing me to this session. Uh, so, can I start now? Or Yeah, sure. Uh, I'll stay on until you've shared your screen, just to okay. check that it's okay. Okay. Let me start it. Okay, I can see that. Do you want to put it? Uh, can right? you see it uh, in full yes. screen? No? We can see it in full screen. Okay. So, uh, over to you. Yeah, good. So, uh, good to go or? Hello, John. Should I go to go? Yes, yes, go ahead. I'm, okay. I'm going to leave the stage. So, okay. it's over to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, hi. Uh, thank you for this beautiful day and a great opportunity and experience today on API Days event in Jakarta. First of all, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Iwan Pujo, and I'm working at Telkomsel uh, for GM Data Solution Operation and Delivery. I've been delivering inside an API product as a service to all Telkomsel client and partners. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, first of all, I would like to share some information related with Telkomsel as the largest telco company in Indonesia. As the largest uh, telco operator in Indonesia, uh, we have a strong commitment to become a digital company. And then in order to accelerating uh, digitization, uh, telco operators uh, continue to grow and improve services, both in terms of technology, innovation, and service quality to fulfill people's trend. Now, the digital age fills the daily lives of people in communication, facilitate a variety of business sector, and create a variety of new business possibility. And uh, as I mentioned here, uh, we have a widespread asset that, that consists of a number of subscribers that we have, uh, uh, that's around uh, 170 million. And this making Telkomsel the largest mobile operator in Indonesia with around 65% uh, of market share. Uh, and then 99% uh, of population have across uh, access to Telkomsel network of rates right now. And 85 plus percent for TG coverage and 80, 80 plus percent for 4G coverage. And then we have uh, more than 20 million of aggregated uh, monthly active users across all telecom cell digital assets, including my telecom cell, Maxstream, and everything. And we also have uh, more than 250,000 uh, of digitized post network all over in Indonesia. Uh, all of this asset makes us stronger for building digital ecosystem to drive adoption and innovation, uh, mainly using APIs expose them to API and let developer or our partners use them for leveraging and empowering their business. Okay, so uh, Telkomsel began to introduce a Telco API for internal and external interests and explore every API resource that can be exposed for digital business purposes. And every asset that we have uh, in the back end can be API such as messaging, for voice, profile, location, header, advertising, insight, and etc. And commonly use a RPC or remote procedure call or JSON uh, JavaScript object notation that more be simpler to understand and consume for other vertical business. A new and innovative solution also driven revenue uh, by using a new business model uh, and the success of Telco API business besides being supported by a reliable platform is also influenced by how to monetize the API itself. And there are many models uh, for API monetization that we have, uh, such as a free developer pays or pay as you go. And then uh, developer get paid, uh, revenue share or affiliate. And also we have an indirect business model like a B2C, B2B, B2B2C. And then sometimes a product API is not just a single package API, for example, API SMS that we have right now. It is more varied in the form of bundling API package. Uh, that more attractive for developer to build rich application and grab uh, the revenue. Uh, enhancement digital channel to accelerate uh, API monetization right now. Uh, digital channel uh, that we have is included system integrator, marketplace, app store uh, for Android and iOS, and also website or uh, mobile uh, and desktop. And then advertising channel, social media, advertising, and uh, payment. Uh, this digital channel that uh, we have uh, actually have have, have business to speed up the development and go to market. 
and also to offer APIs uh, to our partner, external developer, and enable create a new use case and business model. I take a quote from uh, Gardner that API build digital society and digital business works by connecting people, businesses, and things. And those connections are enable a new digital product and business model and business channel. Okay, uh, so um, what I'd like to show right now is uh, we have a very rich and granular of telco asset in telecom cell and also data that we have. And is all of this is ready to be exposed to provide answer to various business needs in the digital ecosystem. And this will create opportunity to position a telecom cell API in the center of a super ecosystem right now. Most of our assets uh, potentially uh, bring new capability and definitely uh, create a complexity for the API product development. Right now we have a categorized into three different uh, offer capabilities here and complexity uh, when we uh, develop an API. Uh, first is uh, API Telco uh, that, we, that have a low complexity and development phase, have a single parameter and only based on Telco connectivity. This API Telco is exposed only from a channel that we have, uh, for instance, uh, SMS, USSD, IVR, and etc. And then the second API is a dynamic profile API that we that have a medium complexity because uh, we have a two stitch not only from one parameter, but uh, we have to combine several parameters coming from IT and network asset that we have. Some of them are showing the customer status that we get from the network. Uh, most of this info must have a customer consent first because we are following the GDPR uh, or regulation in Indonesia before we exposing to our partners. And then third is API Insight. Uh, actually, this API have a very high complexity because we have to build insight from our customer behaviors and absolutely have a multiple parameters across prediction that reflected into the models that we build to get an insight of our customers. Analytic uh, contribute a lot until the product are ready to be released in, in, this, in this API Insight. Okay, so all of those uh, three API categories then could be applied to several use cases that support many business verticals. Use case that possible and challenging for now, uh, let's say for personalization or for specific product, authentication for verification purpose, and then fraud management for preventing from fraudster. Optimization in order to make excellent business operation and cost optimization. And lastly for risk profiling, uh, especially for credit profiling and early warning system. All of these APIs, basically we are trying to expose to our partner uh, through uh, our API gateway uh, and absolutely using a customer consent first, even more for our partner to be bypassed to our uh, API for, for we have to uh, make sure that consent is being given by our customer. Okay, so let's go to the real application in the industry that might be varying across industry here. Some of potentially uh, have all of use case applicable. As you can see here from those three category of API in the industry that use all of use case, the most are financial institution and also e-commerce because of their customer journey is very dependent and coupled with the use case of uh, telco services. For instance, uh, uh, since their customers sign up into their service, they have to create an account. And this information needs to be paired and authenticate with their identity in telco services until their customer asking for financial service. Telco data sometimes need to act as one of another different parameter that consider to for create a decision or approval on, uh, on a bank or FI or uh, e-commerce site. For e-commerce, is also very demanding on telco service for sending another authentication parameter and even for additional factor of authentication. So from beginning until the end of the customer journey and even for every day of transaction, some of, some of the industry vertical need uh, telco act as another verification channel and tokenization part of their transaction. Okay, the main objective here is not only getting the customer insight, but also giving customer an, an additional value for securing their digital activities. Okay, um, so now we go to short list of potential API product that we have uh, in us each of use cases. 
Uh, we have a roaming status for validating status of roaming, data quota verification for verify data quota that uh, that customer has, uh, call forwarding status for checking status of customer, call forwarding, and, and, and also uh, credit balance verification. Uh, basically, most of these APIs personalization use case are useful for verify status of customers. Uh, to support optimization in your business, we also provide an SMS API, which have been common in industry, industry and also uh, uh, status check, uh, check status API is also for checking status of uh, each as their customer. API SIM swap and recycle number, both of these APIs basically for prevent from fraud and also committing fraud for e-commerce and financial institution that, that uh, is quite increasing for now and manage, manage their data, digital identity and also securing uh, for every transaction. For authentication purpose, we have add an additional opportunity using to factor authentication, OTP, and also uh, recently we have a header enrichment. It depends on the customer which API that might match with their purpose, actually. Uh, while customer, uh, especially doing their risk analysis, we also provide an additional parameter for their analysis by knowing active status from our cyber subscriber. They can also use it for decisioning uh, whether their subscriber they are using phone number were active or not active, so they can minimize cost, let's say, for uh, their customer call center or customer service or their advertising. And also, it can be useful for updating their uh, data. Okay. Um, so I'd like to focus only on fraud detection on in this event because it's very, very increasing um, number since 2018 or 2019. Uh, here a bank and financial company especially need to protect this customer from account takeover. Uh, fortunately, uh, a telco operator can offer inside that indicate uh, we have a signal when there has been a change that could indicate a fraudulent activity uh, for example, associating with a uh, new mobile number, uh, mobile device with a bank and account. Several fraud signals are available in various bundles serving a different security use case. For example, uh, we can provide indication of last uh, SIM been changed, a call deferred has been sent up, up, up on the number or the number being recycled. All of this, uh, this uh, could be indicator of an account takeover are among those uh, have been found. Yeah, yeah, it's quite useful for financial service industry for now. Okay. Uh, uh, this is uh, what I'd to explain more about uh, how to, how to uh, implement the use case of uh, account uh, recycle number and, and a, a SIM swap API. Um, okay, uh, as you can see here, uh, from the beginning, from the customer journey, uh, when they open the account or they are doing the registration uh, at the beginning, they, they, they fill or enter name, mobile number, and address. And uh, from from their application or mobile app, they uh, the, the 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 client server will forward this request to our server, and using let's say API active status and API recycle number, both both of these uh, API will uh, validate uh, uh, into our uh, uh, customer profile in Telkom Cell, and send it back to the uh, client apps. To, to do some customer risk classification on their side. And then after that, they can uh, def uh, de decide whether this uh, is frauders, fraudster or not. And then after they uh, decide that this is uh, correct or uh, not, not, not fraudster, fraud fraudster, then they can send or doing another step of verification. So I'd like to focus for, uh, on the detail on how API recycle numbers is works. Uh, uh, first time uh, from the uh, partner, they will send a, a sum of a parameter like a phone number, timestamp, and, and, and definitely consent ID. We have to get the consent ID from the customer. And then uh, from our uh, inventory, we will also uh, find 
based on the phone number that uh, they request, we will find the last deactivation time of the uh, SIM card and comparing with the timestamp that they have sent to us. And then we will just uh, send a response that if yes, uh, because uh, yes, uh, if the condition is a timestamp is longer than the activation time, meaning that uh, this phone number had been recycled and and could lead to a possibility of, of, of a new user. Uh, it is very uh, useful for, let's say, uh, for uh, when we do a registration, let's say on WhatsApp, sometimes they have to decide whether this is a new subscriber or not. Yeah, they they have to uh, yeah they have to check to the other uh, side whether this is a real new or not, or or, or this is a, uh, the number it has been recycled to the other uh, person. So. And the, the benefit of this API recycle number is, is basically is improving data quality during registration time. And also client can additionally validate risk associated with the customer prior to allowing a registration. And the industry that can apply for this uh, API is uh, for e-commerce, bank, FI, and startup. And then for uh, uh, Use case online transaction payment or uh, yes, it is, is, is quite happen or for account takeover here. So when uh, when a customer uh, do a, a payment confirmation, usually they have to input and select a payment method, right? And then behind the, the, the mobile app, they can route the request to our server to check uh, for the status of this subscriber and then uh, check for the whether this is a recycle number or not, and also they can check for this status so they, they have swapped the SIM or not. And then after we respond it back to the uh, client server, they will do another uh, classification on their side, and then they will do another step of verification. So um, it is quite useful for them to 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 add more uh, parameter to the for their decision maker. Okay, so how this API SIM works, uh, SIM swap works, basically uh, we have a phone number and consent ID from our partner. And then comparing uh, and calculating, uh, comparing with our database, uh, we have a phone number and last SIM swap time. This is very important for, for us to, to, to get the insight or respond API for this because uh, we can compare the last SIM swap time and uh, two days time. And then we just uh, respond uh, through the API for using a score. One meaning that before 24 hours, uh, the SIM been swapped uh, by anyone. It could be fraudulent or what, because the fraudster is uh, doing their action is usually right after the SIM been swapped, right? They will not, they will not take any longer for doing that. Uh, uh, it, it can be a decide for, it can be a, become a new decision uh, uh, parameter for the client whether this is a, a fraudster or not. And then the benefit here is to reduce their potential fraud in online transaction and prevent just back a customer security and prevent misuse of an account of stolen identity. Uh, industry that can be applied here is uh, e-commerce, bank, FI, and startup. This is a bunch of API that we have right now. Uh, most of them is uh, responding using a yes or no because we are following the regulation in Indonesia that we cannot send the PII to our partner. We just analyze uh, and giving the insight of each of the customer. Uh, yeah, besides a yes or no, we also send a score because we cannot just send a status of this, the, the, the customer. Okay, uh, so uh, we have a roadmap from the beginning that we uh, did the, uh, the, the API business. At the beginning, we integrate API and client server manually uh, and, and only dedicated for single purpose, no monolithicity at all. And we did a VPN side to side for every connection to our partner. And then currently, uh, we, are, we, we implement a layer approach to maximize the coupling and re reusability of API modules and semi-automatic API integration and manual exposure configuration based on requested API. Yeah, even though this is uh, uh, automatic, but it's not quite full automatic. And we would like to 
go to more uh, fully automatic and the the AY uh, process yeah in terms of our customer need because they want to use our API as soon as they can. Uh, we have a, a plan to integrate a process capability by doing the yourself features in our uh, API gateway portal. And we also prepare for electronic contract so the customer can or partner, they can just uh, use our contract and they can, let's say, put a digital, uh, digital signage on there. And also they will get a usage dashboard, global monitoring and automatic settlement. Okay, so uh, we take a serious uh, precaution for our customer right of data protection. So that's why what I've been mentioned earlier, that uh, we always try to ask our customer consent directly via SMS and, and ask customer to reply if they agree. Um, the result can only be sent to our partner once the customer reply for the uh, consent. And also we have to make sure that all of our partner, for instance, uh, financial institution can update their TNC uh, on, on, on their site uh, to comply with, with GDPR because uh, they are allowing to transfer third party data to us yeah, as an as a API provider here. So uh, we have to make sure both of those two items uh, being follow or, or uh, implement and, and in, in, their, in our customer uh, application or term and condition on effort, on effort even on, on their privacy policy. So okay. Iwan, thanks, thanks very much for um, those insights. I, I guess you've, you've gone from thinking about how you're going to use APIs internally to developing a, a full um, API product catalog and given some um, deep thought into who are the users uh, of those APIs. So uh, some great, great examples across uh, financial services, uh, uh, fast moving consumer goods, uh, e-commerce and, uh, and over, over the top providers. So, um, I, it's, um, I also appreciate you providing the, the, um, uh, an indication of the journey you took through um, from going from basic telco service through to building uh, um, a dynamic profile and the insights and then to, uh, to those use cases. So it shows uh, that there are layers to it, but you've been able, by constructing the layers from, from the, the ground up, you're able to serve those, uh, those many and, and varied uh, use cases uh, through that. So thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, John. Thank you for having me this event.